Hello and welcome back to my channel and to our home renovation series. The next job on our list was the downstairs bathrooms and today's video will focus on the downstairs toilet. This is how the space started out. Since moving in, we had only changed the radiator in here. We also replaced the door and had a new boiler installed. But otherwise, it's exactly as it looked when we moved into the house back in September 2021. The tiles were old and damaged and just in need of updating and the whole room just needed to be brought up to the same standard and aesthetic as the rest of the renovations that we've done in the house so far. Okay, so here we are on day one of the project. Now, while Simon and I love DIY and we're always willing to get stuck in, when it comes to bathrooms, we've now learned to leave that to the professionals. So we always set aside a budget for a professional to complete the majority of the work. So here, I will introduce you to Callum, who is currently stripping out the old downstairs toilet bit by bit. Old fixtures removed, tiles taken up and off the walls, those wavy mirrors are gone, as is the awkward boxing in which we had over in the corner where you can see that downpipe. The front of the boiler cupboard has also been stripped away, ready for the wall to be cut down in size to make that cupboard smaller. On to day two, and we were trying to reduce dust as much as possible because this next step was very dusty. Simon and Cal closed themselves in whilst the angle grinder was used to cut down part of the boiler cupboard wall. Simon sucking up as much dust as possible from inside the room with our Henry Hoover and me stood outside with another Hoover trying to catch anything that was trying to escape from underneath the door. The pair of them made a quick exit once the cut was done and then we left the remaining dust inside to settle before Simon then went back in with Henry to hoover it all up. We've done so many renovations by this point so we're used to the dust but now we always try and minimise it as much as possible. We hired a skip for this project as our ensuite was also being done at the same time to minimise disruption. So all the old fixtures, broken tiles and all this rubble were able to go in there. As you can see, once the wall was chopped back, it gave us a good 40 centimetres of extra space, which might not seem like much, but it makes a huge difference, especially in a smaller area like this. And it meant that we could then change the location of the toilet to where we wanted it to be. At the end of day two, the rubble had been cleared and stud work for the new walls had started going up, along with the new frame for the boiler cupboard. We decided that we wanted to bring some of the walls out to conceal pipe work inside, rather than having all the odd angles of various boxing in sections as it was previously. It's all down to personal preference and we just personally prefer a more clean line look. Day three now and here the concealed cistern is being installed inside the wall so the rest of the stud work can be placed around it. We had to make lots of decisions on this day as to where the exact location of the toilet would be, the basin and access panels to the boiler cupboard so that the pipework could be installed in the right location and the rest of the stud work could be completed. We also made a last minute decision to have two recesses above the toilet which is something that we hadn't considered beforehand. At the end of day three, the wall stud work was done and the plaster boarding had started to go up ahead of the plasterer coming that weekend. The ceiling was plasterboarded and the new concealed spotlights were installed. These are actually the same ones that were used in the garage conversion slash utility room, which we loved because they create a really nice seamless finish on the ceiling. You'll also see the tubing for the extractor fan, which is important in here given that there is no window for ventilation. And taking a look at the floor, once the tiles were removed, there was a discrepancy between the floor height in the hallway and the floor height inside this bathroom, which we knew would happen. So once we chose our floor tiles for in here, we could then calculate how much self-leveling compound would be needed in order to raise the floor to the same level as the hallway. Moving on to day four and in the morning the rest of the plasterboarding was done so now you can see exactly where all of the new walls are and the two recesses above where the toilet will go. The cistern is now inside the wall and can be accessed via both the flush plate 
and the bottom of the lowest recess, which will be tiled. The pipework for the new basin can be seen in place on the back wall and then over on the boiler cupboard, two large access panels have been installed. These are plaster over access panels, so they look a lot neater than the ones that we have in the garage conversion, which you can see in part one of that project and part two will be coming your way in the next few months. On the floor, you'll see that screws were drilled in in preparation for the self-leveling compound. The screws act as a guide for where the pour needs to go up to and they were each measured out quite meticulously. Self-leveling compound needs to be left to set overnight, so this task was left until the end of the day so that no one would need to be going in and out and doing any further work. The boys went out and bought the amount that was needed and then moved on to mixing. They did two buckets at a time as it's quite a time sensitive task because the leveler starts to go off so needs to be poured straight away and then worked into the corners and edges by hand. There were quite a few buckets of self-leveling compound poured in, but they did it and here is the result on day five. The floor had dried by the morning, which was perfect timing for the plasterer who came in and then plastered all the walls and the ceiling. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, but I really love this stage, especially after so much mess and dust to have a room plastered, it makes it start to look like a livable space again, rather than a work site. The recesses were plastered, so it was nice to see how they were going to look in the wall. And then here, these are the plaster over access panels to the boiler cupboard. They're not totally invisible, but definitely better than the ones that we have in the garage conversion. These ones also open with a push mechanism rather than a visible key entry. So they're just neater in general. On day seven, after the plaster had gone off over the weekend, Simon got in early before Callum arrived and did a mist coat on the fresh plaster. Now, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, the mist coat is simply watered down paint which needs to be applied to fresh plaster before painting with standard paint. This is so that the standard paint doesn't flake off the walls as the mist coat absorbs into the plaster rather than sitting on top of it. It's a messy job as the paint is really runny. So this is why Simon wanted to get that on the walls that weren't being tiled before the tiling started on the other walls and the floor. When Callum arrived, he then started tiling the back wall, which is where the basin was going. We decided to tile the entire wall so that it made more of a feature of the fluted tiles that we'd opted for. It also gives a lengthening effect as the wall isn't split into two halves, which is useful for smaller spaces like downstairs toilets. Whilst tiling, Callum did make the suggestion of tiling the recessed wall in the same tiles as well, just for the ease of cleaning, as this was the wall that the toilet would go on. We liked the idea, especially after seeing some of the tiles already on the back wall, so we decided to go for it. However, we did need to order one extra box of tiles because we hadn't planned on tiling an extra wall. So only half of the tiling was done on this day. On day eight, I was able to get in and paint two coats of our chosen paint on the non-tiled walls and the ceiling, whilst Callum worked on our bedroom ensuite. Then in the afternoon, once the paint was touched dry, we swapped places and then he began tiling the floor in here. The tiles we opted for are from Porcelain Superstore and they match the tiles on the walls but without that fluted texture, obviously as these are the floor tiles so they need to be smooth. We chose to run the tiles vertically, or as I call it, in portrait mode, so that the lines draw the eye upwards, again giving a lengthening effect to a small space. We decided on a two millimetre grout space, which is the smallest that we could go for on both the walls and the floor tiles. And here we are on day nine. The radiator was put back on the wall and joined back up to the heating system. And the additional box of fluted tiles had arrived. So the wall tiling and recesses could be finished. Inside the recesses, we opted for the same fluted tiles, apart from the bottom tile, where we chose to use a floor tile so that the surface of that recess would be flat, just in case we want to put anything in there, like a reed diffuser or a vase. Day 10 was grout day. This is 
pretty self-explanatory, but the grout was applied to the grout lines of both the wall tiles and the floor tiles, and then cleaned so there would be no grout residue left. Now, for anyone attempting DIY tiling at home for the first time, it's really important to wipe away the excess grout off the tiles as quickly as possible because it's incredibly difficult to clean it off once it dries, especially if you have textured tiles like these. Days 11 and 12 were for final paint touch-ups, the door could go back on, final electrics like the fan being installed, and measuring and marking fixture placement for things like the mirror, we've also got a little towel rail and a soap pump bracket, all of which had to be measured out before drilling into these beautiful tiles, because at this point, mistakes could not be made. Once the hole is drilled, that's it. Then all the fixtures, so the tap, basin and toilet all went into place and the tile grout could be sealed. The sealer is used over the grout as the grout is a lighter colour and so this just protects it and makes sure that that colour remains true and doesn't go off colour. And here we have the finished result and we are absolutely over the moon with it. It's exactly what we wanted to achieve and it fits in so well with the rest of the neutral decor and this aesthetic that we have done in the house so far. We bought this marble basin before we even completed on the sale of this house so it's nice to finally see it in place now and get to use it. It was a bit of an extravagant purchase, but it's a really nice little feature and it's always nice to have something that's a little bit different. We have black as our accent and metal colour throughout the house, so it was pretty much a no-brainer for us to have black hardware in here. You do have to keep on top of the cleaning with black as lime scale and watermarks from hard water can build up, but we're used to that already. As we have no shelving over here on this wall, we do have this little wall bracket for our hand soap and lotion. And then on the other side, a towel rail and towel for drying hands. I'm really glad we decided to add these wall recesses as the room is very minimal and that's exactly what we wanted and that is very much our taste. But it does just add a little bit of detail to the wall without being too fussy. And with it being a bathroom, it's nice to have a place for some sort of home fragrance. And this little shelf is perfect for that. Over here, I've added two frames to the wall to cover those access panels to the boiler, which again was always my plan because I knew they wouldn't be completely invisible. They're very easily removed so they don't cause any obstruction and it's something nice to look at while you're sat on the loo. And finally, that wall sensor has gone and we now have a light switch that matches the rest of the switches in the house and that horrible orangey yellow light is now nice and neutral. Thank you as always for watching and stay tuned because we'll be sharing the renovation of our ensuite very soon.